Hello, fellow Araxians. Today, I want to talk about the new alerts. Let's talk about the good part first, because that'll be really fast. At the end of the alert, capital ships show up and bombard the continent. That is good. It is some sort of attempt, no matter how small, at lore. Now let's talk about the rest of it. If you guys watch through my channel, you know I love to lead. And what that really boils down to is I want an objective to work as a team towards. And Planetside has always mostly sucked at this, which has been frustrating for a lot of people. What do you do? What's the end game? You don't want to just farm KDR or farm directives for eternity. And although alerts aren't a perfect fix, they are some sort of meta. You've got something to aim at, something to go win, rather than just go trade bases back and forth 17 times. So it is really, really important that they be engaging and meaningful. And to understand why these alerts don't achieve that, let's go talk about one of the biggest problems with Planetside, unbalanced fights. Now I've seen a lot of people complain about this and they usually point to the wrong issue as the root of the problem. Most of the time they say, hey, it's because one faction is overpopped, so they start zerging and that ruins all the fights. So they yell, yes, if you just tighten up the population controls, or if everyone just switched to the low pop faction, that'll fix it. And neither of those solutions do anything to improve the fights. In fact, it usually makes them worse. It ends up fracturing faction and outfit identity, the backbone of creating good, strong contenders that will lead to good fights on those continents. But a lot of people are crying about it, and Daybreak wants to respond to their complaints, so they do it. So we push the thresholds closer and closer together. And what it creates is more and more queue time for people that still have faction identity and still have an outfit that they really want to log in and play with. So we've brought the faction population closer together. We haven't improved the fights at all. And now we've created a whole bunch of extra queue time, which will absolutely drive players away from the game. So why doesn't balancing the faction population fix the fights? Let's take a look at it here. So this is what I look at most of the time when I'm playing. I've got my team speak and recursion on the left screen, my game on my center screen, and PS2 FISU up on the right screen. Now I cannot recommend PS2 FISU site enough. With access only to the API, this guy has come up with so many awesome algorithms that deliver so much information about what's going on on the map in the game. So if you jump over to the miscellaneous tab and check out activity, and then select whatever server you want to look at. You'll notice here on this image that the population is actually pretty darn even, but the fights absolutely suck. And Planetside Fishu's site will show you why. It's because of double teaming. This triangle represents all three factions. The red dot represents what the Terrans are doing. They are pretty evenly split between attacking the NC and attacking the VS. The blue and purple dots show what the VS and the NC are doing. And you'll see those are disproportionately shifted into the red end of the triangle, meaning they are putting more energies into attacking the TR. And the white dot serves as an at a glance what's going on on the continent. In this case, it shows the TR as the ones that are getting double teamed. Now, if the Terran Republic was at 40% population, it would be all right for the VS and the NC to be disproportionately focusing them. The net result would be balanced fights. But in this case, since the world population is so balanced, we end up with stalemated Zergi fights as big blobs of NC and VS push on weaker numbers of Terran Republic because they don't have enough resources to hold them off. It doesn't matter if you're the high pop or the low pop. If you get double teamed, you are utterly screwed. Now, I covered this about a year ago as to why incentivizing people to play in the low pop faction doesn't help and why this idea of trying to really tightly balance the factions is actually not going to lead to balanced fights. So let's take a look here. I sat for five minutes in queue. Really, really tempted to log off. But in my case, I have a great outfit I want to run with, so I stayed logged in for it. But here's what I can't abide with. Once I finally make it into the server, I discover that the Terran Republic is being grossly double teamed and are in desperate need of people logging off of the other two factions that are zerging their warp gate while the Terran Republic futilely tried to hold off the 55 to 60% population that's coming down on them. But even if they wanted to help, they couldn't, because they're going to be stuck in queue for five minutes. Now, undoubtedly, everyone has been in one of these situations, where the overpop faction is the faction that is zerging. But you'll notice on this map, that the VS and the NC are viciously fighting each other at Quartz Ridge, ignoring the overpopulated Terran Republic. 
there would be no problems with the faction being overpopulated if the NC and the VS were incentivized to actually fight them. But if you continue to try to solve this problem by just adding queue times to the overpop faction, you will never solve bad fights. I have been on so many times where all the faction populations are within 1% of each other, but the fights are still Zerg ball messes because one faction is getting double teamed. So I hope people can understand what makes fights in Planetside suck. It's not one faction have more population than another faction, it's how the overall population on the map is distributed across it. On this map, I have to attack the NC to win the alert, but every TR-NC fight involves the TR being 50 to 75% overpopped on that lane, leaving boredom for myself and boredom for the NC that are sitting in the spawn room. Notice that the overall world population is almost perfectly balanced. So we must be very clear on what is the enemy of fun and the enemy of good fights in Planetside, and it is double teaming. Your average soldier on the battlefield won't really understand it. All they'll see is the effects. They'll either be trapped in their spawn room or they'll be sitting in a zerg. Unless it's someone that really understands the entirety of the map or has PS2 Fissio open, they're not really going to be able to put their finger on why they're not having fun. They're just going to point to the faction that is currently zerging them and say it's their fault. It's their population that's the problem. But we can't sit there and be guided by the cries of someone that doesn't understand how the whole map plays out. I mean, sure, I guess we could do that. We could treat those symptoms. You can bring the faction populations closer together so that people don't really have that ability to point to the faction that's got 10% more pop and say it's their fault. But you've done nothing to improve the underlying cause and fights are still just as bad as they were before. We have to go deeper, and even though they won't really understand what got fixed, we can improve the fights for them. Okay, so at this point, we understand that double teaming is the root of all evil in Planetside. Ruins fun, generates crappy fights, and makes it really difficult to retain new players. So now let's jump over to the critical mass alerts. These alerts are based on the idea of creating a double team. They take the absolute worst part of Planetside and make it the meta of the game. Sadly, I can't find the final clip for this footage you've been watching. But the NC triggered the alert. They got double teamed for 45 minutes, many times with 75 to 25% fights in the bases. And to no one's surprise, they lost. The Terrans, doing everything they were supposed to, marched down the NC territories with those 2 to 1 odds and won the alert. These alerts are crushingly disappointing. They start with this arbitrary 25,000 cordium refinement requirement, which just feels like an unnecessary chore. In this case, the Terrans just went ahead and ignored this hive, because dragging tanks and vehicles into some little mountain range sounds just terribly boring. And there are three neutral cores just sitting there wasting away, because no one wants to be bothered to build a base. So right now you have to sit around and wait for an hour or two till someone else builds a core next to their warp gate and it slowly kicks up to that arbitrary minimum before you can trigger an alert. And I think Daybreak Games is saying, oh, but that's the point, that's the objective, you have to go build a construction base. And the thought of that sounds so awful, I would rather just log off. And that's coming from a person that has every construction item unlocked. But as bases are now, they provide nothing valuable in terms of fun engaging fights on the map. Sure, we eliminated bases triggering continent locks because they kept earning so many VPs. But you could have fixed that in the VP system. We could have just removed victory points for cordium refinement. What still remains is the crappiest part about bases. And that is these tiny little bases built near the warp gates with a whole bunch of AI modules. So this first 25,000 cordium refinement holding period is a frustration of either no one doing it or someone doing it, and then if you want to play the objective, it's just a crappy, miserable fight. Sorry, I had to pause for a minute. I'm just laughing, remembering how awful this is. My playtime has plummeted drastically. And it's funny, I keep tricking myself. I'm like, oh yeah, Planetside, I love that game. And then I log in and I look at the scoreboard. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Critical mass, I forgot about that. And then I'm like, oh, well, I'll just ignore it for a bit. And then an alert triggers. I'm like, oh crap, this sucks. Double teaming everywhere. Okay, I remember why I don't log in anymore. Anyways, so the alert triggers, along with my PTSD. And there's two things that can happen. 
The most likely scenario is you're in for 45 minutes of getting double teamed by the two other factions. And obviously Planetside has never been real good at creating those balanced fights. But as long as you don't incentivize every single person on the map to attack one faction, you still have a pretty good chance of finding some sort of semi-even fight. It may not feel terribly meaningful, but there's still a dynamic new engagement that you can be part of. When a critical mass alert is going on, those fights seem to just evaporate, being replaced by double teamy Zergy slog fests. And sure, hey, here's one we won. But it wasn't because of some heroic last stand. It was because the opposing factions ignored us for the first part, and then when they finally started engaging, they just didn't have enough time to tick down all the required bases. And that's the problem here. You can turn the dials on how long the alerts are to who is going to win the triggering faction more often or not the triggering faction, but you can't turn the dials on making the fights not suck. This was still a function of the NC zerging us with three to one pop. And we tried to hold out, we didn't. They still took the base with 75% to 25%, but it just wasn't enough. We still had enough control. It was a viciously hollow victory and the fights on the way to it absolutely sucked. And then there's one other way these alerts can play out. And I really like how someone on Reddit put it. The critical mass alerts pivot on apathy. And what he's saying there is the triggering faction wins when one or both of the opposing two factions just doesn't give a fuck. Here, the alert triggered and the VS and the TR just said, fuck it, we're not gonna play it. And they just kept fighting each other and the NC had a very easy victory. So sure, it was kind of a nice alert because there wasn't this rampage of double teaming everywhere. The fights were pretty darn good in it. But especially for someone like me that plays for the meta, and I have to believe there's a lot of other people out there that plays for the same reason, it makes the whole game feel really hollow when there's an objective out there. And you only have two options. You can either ignore it and contribute to good fights across the continent, or you can play that objective and be part of the crappy double teaming. I got a whole folder of this footage now. It turns out every time I come on, I'm usually driven away by one of these alerts triggering. The only good one of these alerts I had where it was a close battle near the end. It was still that effect where people ignored the triggering faction for 30 minutes, so that kind of sucked. But we ended up losing because the base timer goes slower than the alert timer. That old annoying bug, decision, feature, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, guys, that's the gist of how these alerts played out for me. Every one of my fears about what the system would be has been realized with it. I truly hope that my experience is not the case for everyone and other people are enjoying the alerts. My fear though is that it's not necessarily that people like these new alerts. It's that they like the absence of construction locking continents and they like receiving ISO upon the alert completion. And those are two important additions to this, but that could have extremely easily and without a lot of effort been added into the VP system. In fact, let's spend just a moment and overhaul the VP system right now in a manner that achieves everything the new alert system does without encouraging the extreme amount of double teaming that it does. First, we eliminate the permanent victory point for linking to a warp gate. This was always a massive oversight in the VP system. It encouraged factions to ball up and drive directly to a warp gate to achieve those easy certs and the free victory point. These should have always been temporary victory points. While you have a connection, the point exists, but there is no cert gain for it unless you win the continent while you hold it. Capturing all of the major facilities isn't a great objective, but it's a lot of work to put different better ones in, so those are fine placeholders. Linking to both enemy warp gates, while it was always temporary victory points, this should have been the permanent victory point route. Linking both enemy warp gates is no easy feat, and that means you took both factions on at once. You can't achieve that as easy as making a ball and going to one of the warp gates. If you do that for one, you have to find a way to hold off that enemy while half of your faction goes and catches the other one. It wasn't a common occurrence, and that's why it should be the permanent victory point route. Capture all major facilities is a pointless placeholder, you usually capture the continent through territory control and maybe having all the biolabs far before you could ever complete that one. Delete it, keep it in there, doesn't really matter. Controlling seven active hives. This should be temporary. Not enough people are interested in construction to allow the few people that are the opportunity to create permanent victory points out of it. But yes, you should be able to earn two temporary victory points while you have seven active hives up. 
the most active hives option should be deleted. The reward for winning the alert is good. Winning alerts should be a large step towards winning the continent. Now here was everyone's major beef with the system. Generated victory points should just go away. Hives can generate some arbitrary reward that has no effect on continent locking. You could give everyone on that faction full nanites all of a sudden. It could generate a temporary buff. For the next 10 minutes, your faction's vehicles and aircraft are repaired at ammo towers and resupply pads. Or for the next 5 minutes, your faction gets 50% reduced cost on aircraft and vehicles. Yes, all of these things pale in comparison to generating a victory point, but it is a way that the people that were playing construction could contribute to the fights on the rest of the continent without ruining the fights on the continent. And then the really nice thing about the victory point system is it gave you effective credit for how well you were doing on that continent. It de-incentivized factions from just focusing on one another and ignoring the third one, allowing them to take too much territory because they would inevitably lock the continent in that manner. And then the final thing is you need to add some ISO reward onto the alerts. And I would say even onto each victory point. Generating a permanent victory point would deliver 10 ISO. The victory points that are realized upon winning a continent would generate ISO at the same rate upon continent lock. Every alert would have a 1000 ISO 4 pool. 800 of it would be divvied up based on the percentage controlled at the end of the alert. The remaining 200 would be a bonus that goes directly to the winning faction. When the continent locks, the capital ships come in and bombard it, just like they do now with the critical mass system. Now the victory point system was by no means complete. It was sort of shoehorned in there when they were trying to figure out how to make construction relevant. But completing objectives on the continent makes a lot of sense. And it has a lot of potential in regards to lore, which I'll go into in a different video. My frustration with the critical mass alerts is it seems like it was a lot of time, energy, and effort to achieve a few things that could have been done with a few minor tweaks to the VP system. On top of that, it has the added negative of incentivizing double teaming one faction. It's like they looked at the two major problems with planet side, population control and unbalanced fights, and said, let's just turn those two things into the meta, and then it's the end game rather than the problem with the game. And I guess I just don't really feel like it's a solution just because you say that's how the game's supposed to be played. And how did everyone all of a sudden forget just how many certs were handed out alongside the VP system? And majority of those just completely dried up with the new critical mass system. I guess everyone's pitchforks were just in the shop for repair. Okay, that's it for now. I still want to get in and play with my outfit, so that will always be a reason for me to log in. But outside of that, while these alerts are still happening, you won't very often see me planetside.